we'll be looking at IS20 today, covering a lot of aspects relating to the standard. Now in our previous lessons, we've learned so much about IS standards and their treatments, but right now we'll move over to IS20, which simply is accounting for government grants and disclosure of government assistance. Now we can simply put it as the IS for government grants to be informal or the government grants IS. Now we'll also cover some bullet points gradually to take us on a journey of understanding how to account for government grants and when to disclose them. We'll start off with this by saying what do you understand by the term or the word grants? What do we know by grants? Now IFR site gives us a definition of government grants but not grants itself. From our little knowledge grants are non-repayable funds. I'll repeat. From our lit little knowledge grants are non-repayable funds given to people, an entity or entities, an organization or organizations, a group of people for a particular purpose. I'll repeat it again. From our little knowledge, grants are non-repayable funds given to people, an entity or entities, an organization, a group of people, for a particular purpose. Now we would put emphasis on the for a particular purpose there and we'll go back to it shortly. Now a very good example of that purpose could be a charity work giving grants to charity organizations. Now the main the main thing about the definition of grants is that you do not have to pay back unlike loans which carry interest and require the borrower to pay back the principal plus any interest accumulated grants do not require that now in the term for a particular purpose is also very important because there are criteria there are conditions to be met before grants are given to an entity and in most cases the grants are usually specified strictly for what they could be used for having said that we'll move over to what IFRS thinks about IS20 which is government grants now from the side they say government grants are transfers of resources by government authorities in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. Government assistance is an action by governments designed to provide an economic benefit that is specific to an entity or range of entities qualifying under certain criteria. An entity recognizes government grants only when there is reasonable assurance that the entity would comply with the conditions attached to them and the grants will be received. Those are the two criteria recognized by IFRS for the recognition of government grants. Now, government grants are recognized in the profit or loss on a systematic basis over the period in which the entity recognizes as expense the related costs for which grants are intended to compensate. A government grant that becomes receivable as compensation for expenses or losses already incurred or for the purpose of giving immediate financial support to the entity 
with no future related costs is recognized in the profit or loss of the period in which it becomes receivable. Government grants related to assets, including non monetary grants at fair value, are presented in the statement of financial position either by setting up the grant as deferred income or by deducting the grants in arriving at the carrying amount of the asset. Grants related to income are sometimes presented as a credit in the statement of comprehensive income, either separately or under a general heading such as other income. Alternatively, they are deducted in reporting the related expense. Now, we'll go back, we'll do a quick recap. It says, grants related to income are sometimes presented as credits in the statement of comprehensive income, either separately or under a general heading such as other income. Now, this other income should not be misunderstood for the financial statement called other comprehensive income, which is the second arm of the statement of the um, income and expenditure statement, rather. This other income is under the first arm which is the income statement. Now we'll go to the other part of the paragraph. If a government grant becomes repayable, the effect is accounted for as a change in accounting estimate. Now we'd, we, we'd already gone through a part of the note which says grants are not repayable unlike loans. Loans are repayable while grants are not. So once it becomes repayable, it is no longer a grant. Rather than treating it with IS-20, we should use IS-8 once it has already been recorded previously as IS-20. Now, having done that and having finished what the IFRS website believes or what they think IS 20 talks about. We'll move over to the content of this lectures and the first one would, would handle some bullet points here. First one is definition of all terms used in IS 20, accounting for government grants and disclosure of government assistance. The second, accounting for treatment for government grants. The third disclosure requirements will do all three. Now, in many countries, government authorities provide financial assistance to specific industries and companies that are important for national development. Examples of such industries are newly emerging industries with huge growth potentials, like space exploration, robotics, science and artificial intelligence. Some could also be industries and companies that are key for national survival. Example is agriculture. Depending on the government and its objectives or ideologies, each government sets as criteria for industries it deems important. A change in government could significantly alter these if ideologies are not similar. Now let's do a brief recap of this last key point. It says depending on the government and its objectives or ideologies, each government sets as criteria for industries it deems important. A change in government could significantly alter these if the ideologies are not similar. A very good example is a government that believes the housing sector is 
more critical than say education sector now the government gives grants to the housing sector and the next government that comes in feels okay education sector is very much important even more important than the housing sector the grants given to the housing sector sector could be stopped and maybe new grants given to the education sector so there the housing sector is losing because of the change in government and its ideologies now government grants can be given to selected industries or companies not just by the central authority of the country the business operates but also local authorities can give grants and in so many countries we have different names for subnationals we have states we have um, provinces we have municipal areas we have local governments all these subnationals can also give government grants not just the central authority the main objectives of grants given by government authorities is to a enhance rapid development of the chosen industry b aid alien industries that are crucial as support to them grants are usually not payable back to the government unlike loans which require repayment usually with a percentage interest now we've already dealt with this differentiating grants from loans grants are usually not payable back while loans are repayable and they also carry interest too we'll go to definitions of terms we could meet in is 20 first one is government assistance a government assistance it says government assistance is an action by the government designed to provide an economic benefit to an entity or range of entities qualifying under certain outlined criteria government assistance does not include benefits provided only indirectly through actions affecting general trading conditions or imposing a restraint on competition these are not part and the second is government grants government grants are assistance by government authorities central or local in form of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain certain rather relating with certain conditions rather relating to the operating activities of the entity they exclude those forms of government assistance that do not reasonably have a value placed on them they also exclude transactions with government authorities that cannot be distinguished from normal trading transactions of the entity i will go back to both of them the first one says they exclude those forms of government assistance that do not have that do not have a value placed on them now for a grant to be recorded it has to have a value it has to have a definite value that you can pinpoint okay this is what we've gained from this is how much we've gained from the government and also if what we call grants in inverted commas is a normal trading transaction with the government it is not so if it cannot be distinguished from normal trading transactions such events should not be classified as a government grant and we have types of government grants first one is government grants related assets second government grants related to income we'll move over to them 
government grants related to assets. It says they are grants with a primary condition that an entity qualifying for them should purchase one construct two or acquire three long-term assets four other conditions can be given by the government authorities that would restrict the type one location of the assets two or the period which they could be acquired three now the keywords in the definition of government grants related to assets is purchase of the asset or construction of the assets three it must be a long-term asset then the type of the assets in a lot of situations is usually dictated by the government authorities giving the grant then going on the location of the assets can be restrained to a particular area also it's used then the period to which the asset is to be acquired and used now government grants related to income as the second type of income which we've outlined it says this according to is 20 is any other grant that is not related to long-term asset acquisition as we've said before purchase or construction given by government authorities now we have several names for grants people call grants subsidies subventions premiums ssp as a mnemonic for learning during exams or very useful for exams we call it ssp now forgivable loans there are some terms we have to learn when we are learning is 20 government grants one of which is forgivable loans and we've written down written down the treatments here it says forgivable loans exist when the lender undertakes to waive repayment of loans owed to him under certain conditions forgivable loans from government authorities are treated as government grants when there is reasonable assurance that conditions for forgiveness of loans will be met by the owing entity it puts an emphasis on when there is reasonable assurance that conditions for forgiveness the conditions outlined will be met by the owing entity then the owing entity can record such as government grants then we have the second one loans below market interest rates it says they are also treated as government grants its measurement is done by getting the difference between the initial carrying value of the loan determined with is 39 ifrs 9 and the proceed received the benefit is accounted for using is 20 which is accounting for government grants then we'll move, move over to how do we treat government grants in our books when they occur is 20 states that first point grants should not be recognized until there is reasonable assurance that bullet point one the entity will comply with comply with any condition attached to the grant bullet point two the grant will be received on this once these two conditions are met then recognized in profit or loss over the periods necessary to match them with their related costs why they were given two rather three neither of the two types of grants should be directly credited to shareholders interests 
directly as share capital in the statement of financial position. You should never post government grants as share capital. They are not share capital. Now we'll move over to the treatment of grants related to income. We'll go into them gradually treatment of each of the two types of grants. And the first one is treatment of grants related to income. It says IS-20 permits two treatment methods. Method 1 includes the grants gotten for the period as other income as stated before in the statement of profit or loss. The first one you would post the amount gotten as the grants in the the income section of the profit or loss account the first method and then method two is to deduct the grant gotten for the period from the expense it was used for then post the net balance as the expense incurred if the expense you are supposed to incur is let's say 15 million and you have a grant from government authorities of 5 million naira or 5 million you could net it off to have a net balance of 10 million as the expense and record the 10 million instead of the 15 million as an expense in your profit or loss account now we have the treatment down there it says debit costs grant was gotten for your expense credit government grants income or you choose the net value then you debit it as an expense in the statement of financial position you have it as a credit in liabilities now this could be more complex if it covers several periods which you would have to move gradually from current liability from sorry non current liability rather to current liability till the grant is used up this treatment is for scenarios that last over one accounting year but in general it is credited to the liability section in the statement of financial position then we have grants related to assets as our second type of grants and its treatment also is 20 permits two methods method one deduct the grant income from the cost of related assets then you can depreciate the net value over the useful life of the non-current assets you deduct the grant if the qualifying assets was supposed to be bought by 150,000 and you have a grant of say 80,000 now you could have the net as 70,000 which you would then record as the cost of the asset and you depreciate it over say the life is 10 years and you're using straight line method you have 70 over 10 which is 7 you gradually take out 7 each year as depreciation until the useful life ends then method 2 is treat the grant as deferred income and recognize the income systematically apportioned over the useful life of the assets both method methods achieve the same results and finally we have disclosure requirements is20 re requires us to disclose in notes to the financial statement one the accounting policy adopted for government grants received two nature and extent and indication of other forms of government assistance that the company has received whether monetary or not it should be indicated
then three unfulfilled conditions and contingencies attached to government grants if already recorded in the financial statement any condition that has not been met should be recorded in the notes to the financial statement then that's all we have for today's lesson wish you all good luck in your ICANN exams